Welcome to Story Trading. We got Justin Kenna here, CEO of Game Square Holdings. A special interview with Game Square. Game Square is a sponsor of Story Trading. Uh, thank you, Justin, for supporting everything we do. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Good to be here, Ben. Awesome. Great to have you. So uh, I was following FAZE, F A Z E. Uh, you know, for some time, the last couple of years, I was interested in it because I like to look at what the kids are doing. You know, when you look for the best investments, uh, the smartest thing to do is kind of look like right in front of you under your nose, like what's going on that's becoming popular with the younger generation. And oftentimes those turn out to be the best investments. So I had my eye open uh, about it. Uh, my like uh, now my his 13 or 14 now, 13, 14 year old nephew was like, yeah, e-sporting phase. So I heard about phase and then I'm like, oh, they're publicly traded. So I had my eyes open uh, uh, looking at phase for a while. And it turns out, Justin, uh, Game Square bought phase. And I and, and I guess you were the CFO of phase. So let's just start there before we get into, uh, you know, background of esports. Let's just start with the story of your, you know, your position at phase and that acquisition and how that's now Game Square. Uh, tell us the story about that. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, definitely a full circle moment for me personally. Uh, I was a CFO of Phase, as you mentioned. I uh, started a phase when there was you know, around eight people working out of the house. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, being a little under the weather this week, Ben. Uh, but we, uh, you know, we, we took phase from what was this incredible gaming content business with a huge audience uh, and, and, and raised you know, around 60 million in, in debt and equity. Um, helped really um, you know, build large commercial deals and really did sit at this intersection of, of pop culture. I left FaZe around four years ago, uh, had great relationships there, was ready to kind of build my own thing. My focus within the space was really building more of a media platform, an end-to-end -end platform that could connect brands and game publishers with these huge... So, so sorry to interrupt you, you left FaZe before GameSquare bought them? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. I, I, I left around four years ago prior to phase going public. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, so so GameSquare was an RTO uh, with an influencer agency in the UK in October of 2020. I joined a CEO in January 21. So, you know, had around, you know, just doing around 3 million in annualized revenue, had around eight staff similar to phase, and, you know, really grew that to what today is you know, north of 200 staff, uh, you know, looking at 100 million in revenue within sort of four years. But, you know, we, we were looking at phase as a real opportunity, um, obviously understand uh, how powerful that brand is um, and definitely thought that you know, we had the right model to actually be able to monetize it. We didn't think that that was being done. Uh, and, you know, in a short period of time since acquiring it, you know, we've been able to triple viewership uh, oh, wow. and really re-engage the brand. Uh, now we've got a... <clears throat> A number of sort of large seven-figure deals in the pipeline, and really starting to to monetize it. And yeah, we, we've got things really on track. We're, we're I, I, I saw. I don't know if the large seven-figure deals is, is one of them the NFL deal that was announced like a month, three weeks ago or so. No, so the NFL deal is actually in our owned and operated sort of IP business within the Game Square events business. It's definitely a business that's growing really quickly. We're really excited about that one kicking off uh, the NFL Creator Series this year. With the NFL for the upcoming season uh, with, at Thanksgiving in Dallas, which is an exciting one for us. Obviously, close to home with Jerry Jones being our, our biggest investor in right. Jerry. We'll also be. Uh, be, be I, I don't know if people caught that. That's pretty interesting. Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, is the biggest investor of your company? He is. Yeah, he's been a great supporter, uh, continues wow. to participate in all of our financings. He's actually That's represented on, on the board by Tom Walker, who's the the CFO of the Dallas Cowboys and the Jones. Oh, wow. Trust. How did that connection come about? Was there like a personal connection there or how did he, how, how did he find you guys? Yeah. So the Jones family are, are very closely connected with another billionaire, uh, Texas family, the Goffs. Uh, John Goff actually heard me on a podcast talking about Game Square and what I was trying to build. At the time they owned Complexity Gaming. Uh, they reached out to me, uh, <clears throat> took a little while and we, we finally got there. We did a deal to acquire Complexity Gaming uh, out here in, in, in Texas. Uh, and since then, we've actually been able to, what I would say is an upgrade, uh, sell complexity and acquire phase clan, which, you know, you, you mentioned it before, Ben, but at, at one point, you know, less than 18 months ago, 
was trading north of a billion dollars and were able to acquire it for fourteen million dollars of stock. So we see a lot of opportunity there. Wow, fourteen million! And what kind of uh, revenue run rate does Phase uh, have right now? Yeah, so Phase the business we actually split it into two main assets: Phase Esports, uh, which we actually have a massive match going on right now in Cologne, in Germany, with our Counter Strike team. So hopefully, uh, I'll uh, straight after this interview, I'll be uh, tuning into that one. Uh, phase esports sort of revenue. If you think about 100 million as sort of the base revenue for Game Square this year, uh, the esports business around 12 to 15 percent of that, uh, and Phase Media is around sort of 25 to 30 percent of that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that the the biggest thing that we're proud of not only is sort of the rebrand, the relaunch, and the engagement with viewership and fandom, but it's also the cleanup on cost. From a business perspective, you know, one point last year, FaZe was burning around $5 million a month. We've got that down to less than a million bucks very quickly. You know, we we only acquired- That was that impressive. Month. That was impressive, Justin. Uh, I, I had a note here to talk about that. I was very impressed by, by your press release and the conference call with the amount of cost cutting you were able to do and, and the focus that you guys have on profitability uh, was really smart in, in, and, and from an execution, it's not, maybe it's not just about being smart, but your focus is in the right place execution wise, because, you know, it's been a very tough environment for micro caps, small caps, any company that might need money to grow. That's not cash flow po positive yet. Um, and you know what you're doing to cut those costs and try to get to profitability and just met, I, I saw on, on the conference call, you mentioned that. You're like, I know the market cares about us. And, and you're right, man. The last two or three years have been very tough for any company that might need access to capital. And I was very, very impressed with the, the job you, you guys have done uh, cutting costs. So where are you with that? Give us a status update on where you are right now with you, you know your operating loss run rate, your cash position, and your drive to get to, to profitability. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I appreciate that, Ben. I think part of the, the phase transaction and getting that done was, I think everybody's heard the sexy story and that's great and, and it's real and the brand's real. But how do we mitigate risk here and how do we give ourselves real runway? And, and you know, step one was pulling out cost. And we've, we've done a really good job of that with you know, when we started talking in phase at 100 staff, it's down to 30 you know, they were working out of a warehouse costing, you know, roughly $200,000 a month. That's down to 30000 a month and the list goes oh. on. Um, so, yeah, in terms of, of, of sort of um, runway and burn, um, our cash at 30 June was around $14 million. Uh, We actually received the second tranche of uh, the deal we did with Phase Banks yesterday. So that was a, a $4.75 million amount coming into the bank. So, you know, obviously $14 million at 30 June plus $4.75 you know, let let the viewers at home do the math, but we're in a we're in a pretty strong cash position. Um, burn's really important, like you said. So uh, our adjusted EBITDA loss for Q2 was a loss of 5.4 million. Still work to do, but I think it's trending really well. And that is year on year pro forma. It was $10 million last year, so a really chunky improvement year on year. Um, but quarter on quarter, so Q1 pro forma um, was a $2.5 million improvement. We expect that, if not better, again, which gives you, you know, a really good runway to getting to sort of break even profitability by Q4. Uh, like you said, we have a real, a real ruthless pursuit of getting to profitability. We know that the market's tired of hearing the sexy story. Yeah. You know, we're, we're glad we have that with the brand of Phase and the infrastructure at Game Square. But you know, make no mistake, profitability is key here, uh, and we've got well, runway well, to get there. That's not too far. Break even profitability. Are you talking about the end of the quarter run rate? Or are you saying full quarter Q4, you're targeting break even profitability? Correct. Full quarter Q4, break even profitability. Again, wow. I think if you do the math, um, there's there's more costs coming out and we'll see continued improvement there. Uh, the back half of the year, uh, not only you know seasonally, uh, if you, you look through historically, it's sort of 60-40 on seasonality, the back half's of a bit stronger, but we expect that growth to come from our agency and our IP businesses, which yield higher margins. So we expect margins to grow. Continued cost improvement, probably not as dramatic on the cost side as it's been Q1 to Q2, but continued improvement, greater margin growth. And yeah, I would look at that as that continued sequential uh, improvement on, on adjusted EBITDA to get us there in, in Q4. Well, that is is pretty impressive. Uh, hopefully, in addition to execution, 
there'll be a macro tailwind, right? Maybe uh, interest rates will finally go down and it'll help out you know, smaller companies like yourself. Although not so small anymore. You're talking about a $100 million revenue run rate. That's not small. Um, so this is nice potential valuation, the profitability in the time frame you're talking about. That's really good news, really good report. Um, I did, I just want to go back and mention that the NFL and the uh, Jerry Jones, the Cowboys, it's very interesting. We put a couple of tweets out there in the last week or so. And, and one of those tweets got like millions of views. It was like the NFL people are like their eyes popping, like NFL, like game square doing a deal with the NFL. So hopefully that's going to translate into good, good fundamentals for you. But there is a lot of interest uh, in the NFL deal and, and probably also with the Cowboys connection. You guys are making connections in the right places. Um, let me uh, ask you about, I had a curiosity of my own. I'm not into sports betting at all. You know, there, that's a very popular. I see DraftKings out there, and there's other big competitors to, the, to that. That's a huge sector. Um, tell us a little bit about esports. It, all right, so it's people sitting there. Tell me if I got anything wrong. Like they're playing video games on YouTube or live streaming, wherever platforms they use and there's like teams right you got like the faz phase that's a team so um is there also a betting aspect to that or is that a business you can get into yeah yeah no there is absolutely and and you know, just sort of a really quick refresher for those at home that aren't as familiar <clears throat> phase media and phase esports the two the two core differences are the talent and the creators within phase media they're online and they're streaming and they are you know many of them are gaming it's real in in real life content um, very engaging, et cetera. On the phase esports side, as you were mentioning, Ben, they are competitive teams. They travel the world. They compete in big tournaments. You know, we are, we are over in the Middle East currently competing at the Esports World Cup, which has $60 million of prize money. These prize pools are wow. enormous and they're growing. And the, the esports side is more akin to a traditional sports financial model. On the betting side, absolutely. Um you know, Counter-Strike, which is one of our biggest games on the phase side, uh, that has an enormous uh, market when it comes to, to gambling online. You mentioned DraftKings. It's a funny one. You know, we were, were able to actually bring in Matt Kalish, who's the founder of DraftKings, as a partner into Phase Media. So, you know, I'm on the board of Phase Media with Phase Banks and also Matt Kalish. Matt and I speak regularly. Wow. Um, we are looking at some exciting um, uh, opportunities there between Phase Media and DraftKings. So stay tuned there. Uh, and then on the wow. phase esports side, we actually do you have just a make news. Oh, stay tuned there, guys. <laughs> yes, and James Square. Stay tuned. Nothing, right. nothing, nothing set in stone yet, but you know, obviously <laughs> with with the partnership there, there's some exciting opportunities. So we'll cool. we'll continue to look at that and and, and pursue the market. Uh, when it comes to esports, uh, we actually have a deal in place with Rollbit. Um, our our Counter Strike team are actually based over in Europe. They have a, a huge audience uh, in sort of through Eastern Europe and and so forth. So we have a deal with Rollbit over there. And, yeah, the gambling market is enormous. You know, we are always sort of pursuing pursuing that market and there's a, there's a lot of opportunity for, for partnerships and content and uh, continuing to grow through um, those sort of avenues. All right, sounds good. Got a couple more topics here. Um, so let's see, which one do we want to hit first? I, I want to get your vision you answer it the way you want, whether it's a personal question or a corporate question, but what's your vision, ultimate vision for Game Square success and, and your role in that? Meaning, do you have a particular valuation you want to get to in financials? Do you, What's your exit plan personally? Um, so whether you want to answer that again from a personal perspective or a company perspective, what's your, what's your vision and your ultimate goal with, with what you're doing here at the helm? Yeah, I'll talk about it from a company perspective firstly, but happy to sort of touch on both. I, I've talked openly about building a billion-dollar business, and I very much believe that. Um, hard to kind of imagine today with our market cap, but I think if we were in the private markets, our valuation would be vastly different than where it sits today. And I think that we are a market leader in our industry, and I do think, like you touched on before, as we get some macro headwinds, uh, we will get a real re-rating. So uh, I want to build a billion-dollar business, but more importantly, I want to be the market leader when it comes to building a next-generation media company. And that really is owning the eyeballs of the next generation uh, and being a market leader for game publishers and tier one brands as they enter this market and try to connect directly with youth audience. 
that really is the goal. We, we believe we can be become a billion dollar company. Uh, and we are, again, ruthlessly pursuing profitability. What, what's the time frame? Uh, how long do you think it will take to achieve that goal? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, 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 a, it's a moving beast, I guess, with, you know, uh, where we sit today. Where the All right. So in regards to your long term uh, goals, your vision for Rocket Lab, you're talking about getting to a $1 billion valuation in terms of the time frame, a little bit tricky. So if you can just finish up your thoughts on the, on the time frame to get to your goals uh, on a corporate level there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For going to, uh, look, we, we are aggressively pursuing profitability, like I talked about. I think that'll give us a real re-rating. Um, you know, for, for me, that really is a three-year horizon, which, you know, looks looks like a, 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 a bridge to climb currently given market cap. But again, you know, getting to profitability, macro headwinds, we think we're going to get a real re-rating. So that's really the goal. Uh, for me personally, you know, I've continued to buy stock in the open market. Ooh, I'm, here for the, nice. I'm here for the long haul. Um you know, I, I, I love what I do. I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I, I very much believe that we are building, you know, the preeminent next generation media company. And uh, I'm in this for the long haul. Awesome. And personally, what is your exit strategy or exit plan? Justin? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a, an, an exit strategy uh, at this stage. I'm, I'm really looking to continue to, uh, accumulate stock over time, um, you know, obviously that being part through performance and really driving shareholder value, but also uh, through buying stock myself in the open market. Again, you know, I've done that consistently wow. since I joined as CEO. I will continue to do that. I very much believe in what we're building. I, I don't personally have an exit strategy at this point. My my goal and my focus is is building the biggest gaming media company in the world. Uh, and and getting to a billion dollars and and through that valuation, awesome. Uh, what what percent of these stock do you own? Uh, it would be probably about one and a half percent at the moment, maybe nearly two, a little under. Um, yeah, about about one and a half to two percent. All right, great, great to see you keep buying stock in the open market. That's great. So, all right, last two topics I wanted to hit on is. Uh, so you have these great goals of cutting costs and getting to profitability here by Q4. What's your biggest challenge, your biggest obstacle uh, that might stop you from getting there? And if it's the same question, what has been your biggest uh, challenge in the past uh, couple quarters or since you've come on? Yeah, I think it is the same question and the same answer. I think in some ways it's a, a blessing and in some ways it's a curse, right? But most of our um, challenges and risks really are, external they are macro um and whether that's it's not just capital markets and the headwinds there that we've we've talked about but it's it's, it's also uh, the brand and ad spend you know we've been through a pretty tough cycle there i think we've navigated it really well it's probably our biggest risk right is is brand budgets going away and um you know, i think one of the big positives is we have direct access to this audience that brands are trying to reach and have tried to reach forever right which is you know, 21 to 31, you know, high disposable income, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, I think they have been some of our challenges and they they still exist. I, I would say that we are definitely starting to see those dollars come in. Um, so we we really do think that, um, you know, those risks are, are minimal today and, and, and decreasing as we move forward here. Um, I think we, our team's done a really good job of, you know, while those uh, budgets were minimizing or going away, maintaining really deep brand relationships. And we're starting to see those translate now into dollars that, you know, maybe we thought would hit in, you know, um, Q4 of, of, of 23. They're starting to hit in, you know, Q3 of 24. It's taken a little longer, a lot of hand holding, um, but we are starting to, to break through and see a lot of dollars being spent in, in, the, in the space. Great. And by the way, this is ticker symbol G-A-M-E. We're talking about Game Square, uh, uh, acquire of Phase Media, F-A-Z-E. Um, last question I have for you in terms, you got great goals and you're doing well execution-wise. It looks like slow and steady progress towards your goals. Is there any kind of positive inflection uh, outside of your, you know, let's say your conservative goals, is there any one or two like major deals you're working on or major event that can happen that can all of a sudden cause to, like either hockey stick growth in terms of revenue or profit? Yeah, I think 
we have sort of three main segments of SaaS technology. We have our full service agency, and then we have our owned and operated IP. Our SaaS technology business is growing really nicely, high margin, revenue while you sleep, great retention of clients. But really the area that we're going to get that hockey stick growth is in, in, in segment two and segment three. It's in our full service agency business. We recently announced that uh, we've had around $3 million of recent wins with brands like Top Golf, Five Hour Energy, Dairy Max, and there's a number of more in the pipeline. And when you see those announcements, I think the big positive is that reflects real margin growth, which is really important. Um, segment three with, with Phase Clan and our owned and operated IP, like the NFL Creator Series, these are opportunities of you know seven, and if we perform really well, potential eight figure type opportunities. Um, some of these deals we're talking about with Phase Clan, you know, they're really large, they're longer term. That represents a lot of growth, high margin. The NFL Creator Series, I think, is a really exciting one. That's one that, you know, if it goes well this year, where we are um, launching that Thanksgiving in Dallas, we're doing the Pro Bowl and the Super Bowl. But if that goes well, you know, we'll be taking that hopefully to every city uh, next year and every week of the year. Wow. So wow. There's a few huge. To, to look for that I think will represent real growth for us. Awesome. That's really exciting. And this is the Game Square daily chart here. You can see earnings were just announced a couple days ago. Uh, market cap although is 36 million uh looking for a hundred million dollar revenue run rate a uh, revenue by by the end of the year profitability by q4 lots of great partnerships some of these and anything to do with the nfl like I, as i've noted uh, a lot of interest in that and it sounds like that does have the potential to leave uh you know investors of some hockey stick growth at the right time if things work out uh any final words you want to leave the audience with uh justin yeah, no, look, I think that we're in a really good position uh, from a business standpoint. We've done a lot of work on you know, getting our debt paid out, um, you know, getting real capital and solidifying our balance sheet with you know, non-dilutive transactions by selling off non-core assets. You know, we're continuing to get really efficient. Um, we, we're under no illusion that getting to profitability is absolutely key here, and you know, we have a ruthless pursuit of that. So um, yeah, we, we will... We will get there and, and, and we are aggressively pursuing it and, and we feel like we're going to get a real re-rating in market here. Awesome. Sounds great. If you want to keep in touch with what's going on with GameSquare, you can go to GameSquare.com. You can follow our account at Story Trading. We tweet out any important uh, material events that come out. And uh, with that, we'll see you next time, Justin. Thanks so much uh, for being here. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye.